Chapter Thirty One Exploring New Worlds Christopher Columbus. When the Portuguese began to sail down the West African coast, trade with Africa became much easier. Instead of hauling goods through the hot, dry desert, merchants from England, France, Spain, and Portugal could travel by sea down to the West African ports. But there was still no simple way to get to India. To get spices, merchants had to make the long, rough journey over land. They had to fight off bandits and wandering war bands, and they had to face hostile Ottoman Turks who guarded the roads to the east. Many adventurers had tried to sail down Africa's coast and find a way to India, but no one had succeeded. Note: Although the Portuguese adventurer Bartolomeo Dias had managed to round the Cape of Good Hope at Africa's southern tip in 1487, he turned back without continuing on to India. Because his crew was afraid of what might lie ahead, an Italian sailor named Christopher Columbus was determined to find a sea route to India. But Columbus had a new, wild-sounding strategy. Instead of sailing down the coast of Africa, he planned on sailing due west, straight out into the Atlantic Ocean. Columbus had spent years studying maps and scientific reports. He knew that the best scientists believed the. Earth to be round, and if the Earth was round, he should be able to sail right around it and bump into India's eastern coast. But before he could try out his theory, Columbus had to convince someone to pay for his journey. He needed money to buy ships, money to hire sailors. And money to stock the ships with food and water. At first, Columbus went to the King of Portugal. After all, the Portuguese had been trying harder than anyone else to find a sea route to India. But the king's scientists laughed at Columbus's maps. The ocean is much larger than you think. They warned him. You'll never be able to store enough food and water for such a long journey. When the King of Portugal refused to buy ships for Columbus, he tried to interest the kings of France and England in his ideas. Neither king would help him. So finally, Columbus went to Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain and told them about his plan. Ferdinand paid little attention to these wild ideas, but Isabella was fascinated by Columbus's new map of the world, and she also realized that. If Columbus could find a way to India, Spain could become richer than England or France or Portugal. Spain could become the richest and most powerful country in the world. But when Columbus first brought his plan to Isabella, Spain was in the middle of its war to conquer Granada. Isabella was using all of her money to pay soldiers in the Spanish army. Not until the war was over, seven years later, could she buy Columbus his ships. Finally, Columbus was ready to test his new ideas. Isabella provided him with three ships named the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. She hired sailors, stocked the ships with enough food and water for several months, and provided Columbus with cloth, gold, and other goods that he could trade for spices when he reached India. Christopher Columbus set sail in 1492. As the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria sailed into the Atlantic Ocean, headed west, the three ships passed other vessels leaving the Spanish shore. Wails and cries rose up from these ships. Which were crowded with weeping men, women, and children. The Jews were leaving Spain. Driven out by the laws Ferdinand and Isabella had passed against them, Christopher Columbus noted his sighting of these ships in his journal and kept on sailing west into the huge, trackless waters of the Atlantic Ocean. At first, his ships had good winds and the journey went well. But as the days passed by, Columbus's men began to murmur: When would they come into sight of land? Spain was growing further and further away, and they could see nothing but more water ahead of them. Strange birds flew overhead. Odd fish arched out of the water. 
The seaweed grew so thick that the ships could only inch forward, and the men were growing sick with a disease called scurvy because they hadn't eaten any fresh fruit or vegetables for so long. Their gums were turning black, and some of the sailors were even dying. We'll never reach land, Columbus's men complained. We'll run out of fresh water and die of thirst out here. The world isn't round. The sea goes on forever, and we'll never reach the end of it. Others said, What if the ocean runs off the end of the world? We'll sail over the edge and fall down a never-ending waterfall. They plotted to throw Columbus overboard and turn back home. Finally, afraid that his men would mutiny, Columbus agreed to turn around if land wasn't spotted in three more days. All the next day, Columbus paced around his ship, straining his eyes for a glimpse of land. If no land was spotted, he would have to return to Spain and waste a lifetime of effort. The sun had barely risen on the morning of the second day when a seaman, high up in the ship's rigging, shouted, Land! Sure enough, a tiny island lay just above the horizon. As the ships drew closer, Columbus realized that the island was surrounded by dozens of others. He was certain that he had reached the islands off the coast of India. When Columbus and his men landed, Columbus claimed the islands for the country of Spain. He found that people lived on the islands, brown-skinned people with black hair who were willing to come out and see the goods he had brought with him from Spain. He called these people Indians. But as Columbus looked around, he grew more and more puzzled. The language these people spoke sounded nothing like the Indian language he had expected to hear. He saw no gold, no pepper, no nutmeg, no riches. Instead, the people of the islands brought him balls of cotton thread, green and yellow parrots, and strange foods, sweet potatoes, and green peppers. Where were the spices and the treasures of India? Of course, Columbus hadn't landed in India. He had landed in the islands off the coast of Florida. His maps showed empty water between Spain and India. But two huge, unknown land masses actually lay in his way, North and South America. After Columbus explored the islands, he headed back to Spain. He brought Ferdinand and Isabella parrots, sweet potatoes, green peppers, pineapples, and even several Indians, but no spices or gold. Ferdinand and Isabella agreed to pay for several more voyages to this new land. Columbus traveled back across the ocean and began to work on a map of his discovery. He still insisted that he had found the sea route to India, but others soon began to realize that Columbus had found something new, a whole new continent. Five years after Columbus landed in the Americas, a Portuguese explorer named Vasco da Gama finally managed to sail around Africa and reach India. The journey took him an entire year to make.